So uh, welcome every, everybody to the third day of school. Uh, so our next speaker is going to be Professor uh, Racy. She's going to tell us about the second part of her course, Wandering Domains for Polynomials in Higher Dimension. Thank you very Thank much. So I was uh, just uh, showing the, the last slide, the last page that we saw yesterday. So yesterday, well, by the way, if I am too slow, just tell me and I will try to speed up. And if I'm too, too fast, then tell me also, and I will try to slow down, okay? Eventually I will get to the, to the good uh, velocity. So yesterday we left ourselves with the, uh, the statement of two main theorems in dimension one. So one on one hand, um, we have Sullivan's results telling us that if you have a rational map of degree D on the Riemann sphere, then every Fatou component is going to be pre-periodic. So it's going to have finite orbit. And after that, I said, oh, look, so now we can, back, we can come back to, um, to way before. So at the beginning of uh, 1900s, and we have Fatou's classification of invariant Fatou component for the same kind of maps. So this kind of photo components cannot be anything. They can either be attracting domains or parabolic domains or rotation domains. And what I was saying is that, to, well, to, maybe not today, but at the end of this mini course, you should have at least the ideas on how we proved, uh, we constructed an example of holomorphic and homomorphism of uh, C2 with a wandering domain, okay? Which is polynomial, et cetera. So, so this is where I stopped yesterday. I'm sorry, I didn't do many pictures, but I will try to do a little more today. So today we're going to deal with this parabolic domain stuff. So let me open a new file. Yep. So let me give a definition of what a parabolic domain is. So you, we have F, our rational map, or if you want, think about it as a polynomial, it's fine. So rational of degree at least two. And we have omega, f a two component, which is invariant, that is, it is sent to itself by f. Okay? And so a parabolic domain For, well, sorry, omega is a parabolic domain. Okay, I had coffee, but not as, my, as many as I wanted. Uh, if there exists a point in the boundary of omega such that the e sequence of iterates, Fn, converges uh, to alpha on every compact sets of omega. So what I tried to draw yesterday, I have a point alpha in here. This is going to be my omega. And if I pick a point in here, well, I will find neighborhood of this point where the sequence of iterates is going to converge to our, actually maybe I can put it a little bigger, to alpha. And actually alpha by continuity is going to be a fixed point. So f of alpha is going to be equal to alpha. And moreover, so I will not prove it, but there is a lemma which is called the snail lemma. who is going to tell you that the multiplier of f at alpha is going to be equal to one. So I didn't define what the multiplier of f is. So I have- so, Sorry, I mean, yes. I mean, in, the, in the previous statement, uh, what happens to points on the boundary? You say that uh, on yeah. every compact subset in omega, but- yeah, I don't say anything about points in the boundary. Okay, you don't specify. 
Yeah. So the points in the boundary are going to be in the Julia set. Okay. Okay. So actually, so I am I'm not telling you all the story of uh, what I could say in um, oh, complex dynamics in dimension one because otherwise I would need a little more time. But okay. uh, if you so I'm going to get to it. So in here I didn't define what the multiplier is. So you can of course try to say okay what something on about the points. Should I have this point in the Julia set? Should I have this point in the Fatou set? And the first points you want to study are fixed points. Okay, if you have a fixed point, so if let's say P is a fixed point, so F of P is equal to P, then you can define, so then you have the differential map at P acting on the tangent space, to the tangent space, but on the, the, this tangent line is simply, so the, this tangent map is simply going to be a multiplication. So this is a multiplication. By a complex number lambda. And I'm going to call lambda, so lambda is, going, is called the multiplier. of f at p and of course what i always have in mind is that this multiplier is simply going to be the the first derivative of f at the fixed point okay but when you take the first derivative of f at the fixed point then you are choosing coordinates so this is not a good definition whereas talking about the tangent map this is a good definition but if p is not equal to infinity, so you compute it. So if P is not my infinity point, then lambda is simply going to be F prime F P. And if P is infinity, sorry, then while well, you move it to a point which is not infinity, by using a Mabius transformation, which is an automorphism of the Riemann sphere, and then you take the derivative, okay? And then to a point, say Q, and then you compute, well, F tilde prime of Q, where F tilde is the conjugate map. And this multiplier plays an important role when you do uh, local dynamics, and but also in global dynamics, because if the multiplier has modulus less than one, then your fixed point will be, will be living in the Fatou set. If the multiplier has modulus bigger than one, then your fixed point will be living in the Julia set, because no you will have no neighborhood of the point which is sent to itself. So just let me, I know I, I, I decided I didn't want it to do many proofs today, but just to give you a hint. So the multiplier is telling to you what happens at the linear part of your map, of your function, okay? And so if you have that the multiplier is in modulus less than one, then, so you have a fixed point and that the first derivative is less than one. So you can find a small neighborhood, which is sent to itself and so strictly inside by F, okay? And so you're going to be contracted. And so you can also prove that either it's are going to convert to your fixed point, which means that P is going to belong to the Fatou set of F. And whenever you have that the modulus is bigger than one, then for every neighborhood, small neighborhood that you take of P, well, this will be sent outside. So you will go outside. You will, you will take any point in here. Sorry. Yes, this is working. 
any point in here, and under finally many iteration, you will go outside this fixed neighborhood. Okay, and so P will not belong to the Fatou set, which means that it belongs to the Julia set. So in here, what I said, sorry, okay, can you see? I think so. So in here, what I'm saying is that we can prove with a lemma, which is called the Slane lemma for some reason, that if we are in this parabolic domain case, then the first derivative of f is going to be at the fixed point is going to be equal to one. So now what I would like to do is to study a little better what happens to the local dynamics of uh, a function, a holomorphic function having a fixed point with derivative uh, one at the fixed point. Okay, so now I go back to uh, local dynamics. of uh, a parabolic germ, so actually a tangent to identity. Function. At a fixed point. So if I am choosing a, a chart, so I had my agreements here, right? Here. I have a point alpha, which have derivative, so alpha is sent to itself by f and f prime at alpha. So I'm, I'm assuming alpha is not infinity and f prime of alpha is one. But now I'm doing everything local. So I'm taking a small neighborhood of alpha and I want to know what happens in this small neighborhood. But this means that I can choose a chart and I'm going to work simply in C, in an open set in C, and if I choose a chart, I can choose my alpha to go to the origin. Okay, and so now I have, let me go up. Now I have f, of f a holomorphic function from a neighborhood of zero in C to itself. So I'm consider, I can consider a germ. But if you prefer, just consider a polynomial. That's fine. So in here, locally, I can write f of z is going to be equal. z because the first derivative is one plus higher order terms. And in here, what I'm going to study first, so I'm going to start a DM model. I'm going to see what happens if I have z plus z squared. So this should not be of a big arm, right? So let me write it again, as our students do, z times 1 plus z. And now you see that if you, oh yeah, well, let me have a bigger picture. Okay, so I have zero. Now let's see what happens if I pick a point in here on the negative real axis. If z is equal to minus x with x positive, what happens is that f of z is going to be, well, z times one plus z, which is minus x times one minus x, okay? But this is less than one, okay? And so if I pick a point in the negative real axis, I'm going to be, well, I'm, I'm going to multiply it by a, a quantity which is less than one. If I do the second iterate, I'm going to multiply it again by a quantity which is less than one and still negative. And so whenever I take a point in here, I'm converging to the origin. Is it, do you see it? Okay, it's going to be easier on the other side. So now if z is equal to x, which is positive again, so I'm here, well, f of z is going to be x times 
1 plus x. And so this is even easier, right? I'm multiplying by something which is strictly bigger than 1. And so I'm going away from the origin, infinitely many steps. And remember, I'm just trying to understand what happens in a fixed given small neighborhood of the origin. So I will not be able to do to sell anything else except for the fact that infinitely many steps, I went away. Okay, so this tells me that I have this direction, which is sort of attracting, this direction, which is sort of repelling, but these are real directions. So this is not a full neighborhood of the origin. And what I would like to, say, to understand is what happens in a full neighborhood of the origin. So can I recover the existence of this kind of but two components in this situation. Okay, is it always true that if I have a parabolic point, meaning a fixed point uh, with derivative one, then it's, it's going to be in the uh, boundary of the Fatou set, so it's going to be in the Julia set, and it's going to be in the boundary of a Fatou component. So to do so, well, one has to uh, at least find an open set in here of points which are converging to the origin. Okay, so the idea here is, okay, let me see what I can do. I would like to prove that if I pick a small disk in here, I will be able to prove that orbits in this small disk will converge to the origin. So there is a theorem doing this, this. Okay, there is a theorem due to Lu and Fatou. So there is a, okay, in here, so I'm going to do it in the model. So uh, there exists, so this is not the standard um, statement, but this is what it's going to happen. There exists a positive R such that if I consider um, the disk of center minus r and radius r, so this will be sent into itself by f. And fn restricted to this disk is going to converge to the origin uniformly. And if I do the other way around, so if I look what happens inside here, so if I look at the other side of the picture, on the other side of the picture, well, I simply can consider the inverse of f, and the inverse of f, well, the local inverse, is going to be equal to z minus z squared plus i of the terms. And so if I'm able to prove this, I'm able to prove also that there is a small disk on the other side well, orbits go out infinitely many steps, meaning it is attracting for the inverse of f, okay? So how does somebody prove this? How can we prove that we have this kind of attracting behavior on this side and repelling behavior on the other side? Well, one way to prove it is Okay, I understand that I told you, well, let me put my point at the fixed, my fixed point at the origin. Now I'm going to put the fixed point at infinity. So let's consider in this baby example, sorry, I don't have much space. So again, let me take f of z, which is z plus z squared, and we consider a change of coordinate sending uh, zero to infinity. And I'm going to consider capital U equal to minus one over Z. So in the U coordinate, oh, you can- Sorry, Yasmin, I have a question before. Yes. In, the previous, uh, in the previous example, you have points arbitrarily close to zero, whose uh, alpha limit is zero and the omega limit is, is, is zero. That is the back bar orbit accumulate, uh, you know, you, when you see the when you look to the to the bar bar orbit of the point you go to zero and the positive orbit of the point accumulate to zero also or not the, the backward orbit accumulates to zero 
So, and the former, oh, you know, it's a kind of, of, of petala. You have a point that, uh, exactly. that the a limit is, is exactly. Yeah. You're going to have, sorry, you're going to have a petal in here on this kind of, on this part, and then a repelling petal on the other side. But yes, what but I, I, I would like to know what happened in, in exactly in between the two the two circles. And I am asking you if you have points which uh, that the alpha limit is zero and the omega limit is also zero. Yes, exactly. exactly. So I didn't. So for the moment, I'm just uh, proving the existence of small pedals. So proving. I'm just trying to give you a hint of the existence of small pedals. Yeah, okay, okay. But what happens in in the truth is that what you're going to have is you can enlarge these pedals. So it's something like this and enlarge these pedals on the other side. Well, this should be a little more symmetric. I'm sorry about that. Okay. And you will have, whenever you pick a point okay, in, the intersection. Okay. in the intersection, then on one side, you go to, towards the origin. And if you consider the, um, the backward uh, images, it's going to converge on the other side. Is this answered my, my question in a very general, okay, thank you. You're welcome. So for the moment, I didn't do that because I wanted just to convince you about the existence of this first little disc in here, for this first little pedal. So how do we convince ourselves about this? Well, we go to infinity and in here, F, so the action, and this u coordinate is going to be f of u, which is equal to, so you can do the computation. I'm trying to do it by, um, so I'm copying my notes, u plus one plus, and then, okay. And then I see something in my notes that makes me wonder, but I need this. So let me add in here, a z cube, okay? So in here, I will have b over u plus, big O of one over u squared, okay? So I will have other terms. And this B here is related to this A over here. So what happens when I take R big enough? So in this U variable, in this U variable, let's do it, yes, in another color. If I take R big enough, and I consider a right of plane in here, what is this map doing? So if, if R is big, this part is pretty small. So what, I, what happens if I iterate? I take a point in here, Z, oh, sorry, U, I consider U plus one, so I land here, and now to know where the actual image under f of u is, I will consider a small disk in here, okay? So I can find that this, uh, so you can prove in a more proper way that the region real part of u bigger than capital R is going to be f invariant. Okay, and uh, yes. And what's going to happen is that if I now take, oh, I, I, did, I did two mid, two big pictures. So if I now take in here, my original small disk, I can make sure that this image here is going to land in this, uh, in the right half plane. Okay, so you do the computation. Of course, I'm not, I'm, uh, hiding a lot of uh, things in my computations that I didn't do. But you can prove that you can find a small petal landing in this right off plane. And now you see why I had to put uh, minus one over Z here. And once I have that, I understand that in here, I'm going towards the uh, towards infinity, like one over n, because u n, sorry, like n, because u n is going to be u zero plus n plus a little thing. So 
something little. Something that I can't forget. So this part, which I can forget. And so this means that Zian is going to be, so it's going to converge to the origin, like one over n, whenever Z naught belongs to this minus RR uh, disk. Okay. So now in here, so this is not exactly the end of it, because so I told you the, the Lofa 2 flower theorem is telling to me that I, I can find a petal, a small petal, where I converge to the origin and I apply it to a inverse. I can find a small petal when I converge to the origin of the other side. But these two petals at the very beginning, they don't uh, intersect. So we can enlarge. Petals so that they intersect. And so the picture in my main model is going to be something about. So let me try to draw it again. So this is going to be my attracting petal where all orbits, you see that I'm, I'm putting my orbits to converge to the origin like. Uh, in this direction. Yes, Luna, you wanted to tell me something? Yes, um, Jasmine, um, your D minus R R are the petals, right? Once it's yeah. attracting. Yes. Huh? Is then it shouldn't be minus R zero because the parabolic fixed point in your picture is at zero, isn't it? I don't understand your question. Minus R? Your, uh, your domain minus R R is the picture of the petal, right? No, not exactly, no. Okay. No. The, this is a disk, sorry, I didn't... Okay, 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 okay. This, this small disk that I pictured here. What I'm saying is that once you know that these two kind of open sets exist, now you can enlarge them. Now you're going to enlarge this region over here in order to get a larger petal. So if you want, I can give you all the all the details, which are pretty annoying, but it's fine. We can do that. But no, it's fine. I was just saying that the, the, the disk has boundary zero, right? At zero on the boundary, yes. Yes, because it's exactly. written minus RR. Well, it's oh, okay, 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 okay. No, it's me being a stupid. Uh, that the center is minus R and that the radius is R. Sorry, it's me being extremely stupid this morning. I'm going to get more coffee. Sorry, forget about whatever. Nine, I said. For you, it's uh, I don't know which time for me, but it's like <laughs> I'm tired, so I could make Jasmine. Yes, uh, you, you have to explain uh, about parabolic fixed points very carefully for Luna. She doesn't understand these things very well. Yeah, I know, I know. She's not an expert at all. No. Okay, sorry. Let me sorry. <laughs> no, I like that. But at least you're following me. That's fine. So you're not like my students. So in here, what I was saying is that you see that I'm always doing my arrows. Like, okay, not only I'm converging to the origin, but I'm converging to the origin tangentially to my direction. And this is exactly what happens in here. So the direction that I had in here, it's going to go to the positive real axis direction. And well, you see it when you iterate. So if this part is very small, what's going to be happening when I iterate u0 is going to be like a u, u0 plus one plus an, a little error, but again, you're going to converge to infinity more and more tangentially to this positive real axis. Uh, direction. And so in here, not only you are converging to the origin, but tangentially to this attracting direction that we had. Um, yes. And what I was saying before is that, so this time I'm going to try and make them a little more uh, symmetric. I have a repelling pedal where, well, orbits are converging to the origin, but in backward time. So what I'm usually doing is that. So it's going to be repelled, okay? And now you have 
the existence of these petals, if you take a polynomial, then you can consider the points landing in this kind of, um, of petal. So, and this reminds me that I didn't do, tell you something. So, okay, let me give a definition. Okay. Let me give you a definition. Uh, yeah. In the intersection, you have like these homoclinic points. Yeah. Right. So in the intersection, what's happening is that in the intersection, everything is defined, the inverse, the local inverse and the forward image. And so I'm going to go like here and I was coming from there. Mm -hmm. Okay. I take a point in the intersection. Well, it's going to go out of the repelling pedal to get their back in the attracting pedal in this kind of stuff. But, and if I consider the inverse, which is well defined, the local inverse, it was coming from an orbit. So it's going to go like this on the other side. Not sure that it's really seeable. Okay, cool, perfect. So I forgot to say something. In here, you see that I was almost conjugating to the translation by one. Okay, I changed my coordinate and I was almost in translation by one. Well, the problem was that, well, it wasn't a translation by one. Well, that's life. So you can also find, so, yes, I will not prove it. So let me say it like this. There exists um, the attracting pedal. which is the orange one over there, there exists a coordinate that I'm going to call, uh, let me be consistent with myself, capital Phi of F, such that it semi-conjugates F to the translation by one. So Phi of F composed with F is going to be equal to Phi of F plus one. Okay, so semi, semi conjugates F to the translation by one. And the same happens for the inverse. So in the repelling petals. Okay, I can't really talk about the, well, I can't talk about the Fatou component, the Fatou coordinate. So let me call it. So this is called, phi is called. A for two coordinate. Because since it's conjugating to the translation by one, it is well defined up to an added constant. So in the repelling pedal, I shouldn't talk about the uh, for two coordinate of F on the repelling pedal because I can talk about the for two coordinate for the inverse. So in here, I will consider so there exists. A reparameterization, so there exists a repelling Fatou parameterization that I'm going to call psi ref. Um, I'm not saying from where it goes and when it lands, uh, semi conjugating. the translation to F. So the translation by one to F. That is, what I'm having is that phi of F composed with T1 is simply F composed with phi of F. And T1 of Z is equal to Z plus one. So let me call maybe U, whatever. Let me call zeta is zeta plus one. Okay, I didn't tell you, so let me just spend one sec in, uh, in tell you something. Okay, you can ask, you might ask, what happens if in here, I don't have z squared, but I have a, a high, a bigger uh, power? Well, actually the same ideas work to prove that you're going to have a flower of 
petals which are attracting and petals which are repelling. Because you can still define what means to be an attracting direction, what it means to be a repelling direction. And so if you have, say, so let me just make a, a parenthesis. So if you have f of z, which is going to be equal z minus, well, let me put a minus just for one sec. Uh, z to the power k plus one plus i of the terms. Well, in here, I put a minus so that my, um, so k is equal to three, for example. You're going to have that you can take the root of unity and you're going to have three attracting directions, three repelling, sorry, it's repelling directions. And then you're going to have your pedals. So I'm very bad in, in pictures. So let me try to make a, a two flower theorem again. Okay. Yeah, you see, I'm not that good, but at the end, you will see a flower, okay? One should do it a little better. Okay, so you can do exactly the same thing in, in, um, in higher degree, but in here, I'm not going towards that because to prove the existence of a polynomial endomorphism of C2 with a wandering domain, I just need this kind of map. I just need to understand what happens to the dynamics of this kind of map. So for the moment, everything is local, right? And so you could ask me, okay, how do you get back to, um, to your Fatuko components from the very beginning? Okay, so you would like, for example, to say, oh, look, if I'm in this parabolic domain case, this is coming from a petal. So locally, I will have a small petal, which is attracting. And so if you have, sorry, I'm trying not to make you uh, sick. If you have this coordinate conjug semi-conjugate into the translation by one, you should be able to extend it by using the dynamics. Okay, so let me give you a definition. So I'm going to call D parabolic basin so this was just a parenthesis. You can forget about it if you want. At zero of F. We go of Z squared at zero. That I'm going to denote by D of F is the open set. of points whose images, whose orbits, sorry, under F are going to land, uh, intersect the disk. So let me put a disk so that there is no confusion uh, for all R bigger than zero. Okay, so I'm going to intersect this desk, this big desk here. Well, it's actually, the important thing is when it is small, this desk for my orbit. Okay, so this is going to be, uh, to be stable. And what happens is that whenever you define it like this, then it is going to be easy to define the extension of this. Um, coordinate. So how do I extend it? Well, so psi, if I of f extends to a map that I'm going to, con to call psi from b of f to c, again, by simply taking, okay, I iterate, so I know that I have, let me Thank you. So whenever I land in here, I know how to semi-conjugate, okay? I know to go, how to go to translation by one. Okay, so what I do is that I take a point in here, say, which is going to be in the cauliflower, 
even if I'm not able to, so you, you don't show it to anybody, right? Oh yeah, it's registered, fine. Anyways, so I pick a point. I So let's put it inside the basin. So this is going to be my basin. I iterate, well, finitely many times to get into my little desk where I defined the uh, Patu coordinate. And then in there, then I can apply F, phi. Okay, then, then it's, that's, it's correct. This is a point where I can apply psi. And now, how can I make sure that this is going to give me something which is, uh, which is a good function, which is working out well? Well, I get, I'm going to take out the number of iteration that I took to get inside. And so, phi f of z is going to be equal to definition by phi of f of f and iterate and zero say minus and zero where and zero is the number well f of and zero of z belongs to my small disk well let's say f belongs the petal. Okay, so I'm, I see I see that I'm running out of time, but we we started like three minutes after, so maybe I have still some time. Yes, you have three more minutes. Yeah, three more minutes. So once I get in here, I one well once you get in here, you can do a lot of things. You can also uh, you could also ask, oh, how, how do you prove that they exist? How do you construct this uh, Patu coordinate? But for what I will do afterwards, I will need to know what is the asymptotics of this uh, coordinate. So you can prove, so this is a result, that once you have your Fatu uh, coordinate, phi of f at z is going to be like minus one over z minus, so in here again, I have f of z, which is z plus z squared plus a z cubed, and I don't care about the rest. So this was an a. Yep. So this was a minus d log of minus one over z plus a little o of one as the real part of minus one of the uh, r, z is going to be towards plus infinity. And in this, in here, I'm taking the branch of logarithm defined on c minus the negative real axis, which vanishes at one. And I can also find a way of writing down the, Fatu, the repelling Fatu parameterization. So this is going to be minus one over u plus b log of minus u uh, plus little law of one. Again, as this time, as real part of u tends to minus infinity. And so we have these two coordinates. And as, a, as we know this before, since these two pedals intersect, I can consider what happens in the, in the intersection. I can ask what happens in here. And so, well, there is a result due to Lavoie so that we'll, we will see tomorrow, which relates these two coordinates, which for the moment have nothing to do with dynamics. I mean. Okay, these are coordinates. These are somehow way of writing down our dynamics in an easy way. But for the moment, who cares, right? I mean, we know what happens to the dynamics. We didn't want to have a normal form. It turns out we have it. Fine. We're very happy about that. But dynamically speaking, they have no meaning for the moment. And we're going to relate them to the dynamics of a perturbation of my little f over here. And so this is uh, due to Lavoie. And since my time is up, I will stop 
you and I will thank you all for your attention. Thank you, Professor Raisi. Any questions for the for the speaker? Sorry, I probably have a very silly question, and I apologize. <laughs> The, 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 the two maps are different, or you are uh, one is phi and the other is psi. Yes, sorry, it's not really written well, but oh, oh my goodness. Oh, okay, I okay, okay, okay. <laughs> that is uh, you have the right of writing in your style. Don't don't worry. This, well, that come is, uh, <laughs> yes, these are no, different. Okay, okay, thank you. It's my oh. my that's fine. My question. Thank you so much. Very, very nice. Thank you. Any other question? Yeah, maybe something I didn't make the calculation. When you said uh, uh, examples like f of z is equal z, z minus z power k. Yes. That, yeah. So so the rate of convergence is kind of polynomial one over n k in this case. Am I right? Uh, no. Wait. Uh, in here, the rate of so z n. Is going to converge like one over n to the power one over k. One over k, yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so you say that in in this stuff, uh, your convergence in the parabolic case is kind of uh, always uh, worse than one over n. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. More questions, comments. I have another question. Sorry, it, 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 the proof of this is uh, involves uh, some is just calculation, or you do need to use something uh, extra clever? No, 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 no. It's not extra clever. So actually, this is something that you. So the proof of the Lufla two flower theorem, you just need to know some complex analysis and to do estimates. So the idea is that when you do when you do it with, uh, so what happens is really you go to one over, so you, you go to this uh, capital U part of the plane by using, so you just do it in Z squared, you forget about this uh, uh, higher degree case, which is going to be the same. So first you do it for Z squared and you consider this change of coordinate and you find an invariant basin, well, an invariant domain in here. And your invariant domain is going to be real part of you bigger than R. And then you put it back, okay, for big R, okay? You take a big R so that this part is very small with respect to U plus one. Essentially, you want it to be, uh, so you want this part to be less than one half of real part, less than one half, so that you're able to prove that real part of u plus one plus this stuff is bigger than real part of u plus one half, which is going to stay inside this domain. And then you go back. So this is, no, no, okay. But the point is that when you want to enlarge these pedals to get to this picture over here, then you have to do something a little more clever, something like this. And when you are in such a domain, well, imagine you will stay very near by the boundary. So you want to prove that well, when you are near by the boundary, you still have enough space to get inside your domain. And these are just really small estimates. It's not so difficult. So this is not, so this is really something that you can give to a third year student in mathematics and he or she should be able to do it. Yes. With some time. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. So, so the the dynamic is in the petal is like holomorphically conjugated with the translation, or is really exactly the same the the translation in, in which petal or? So in the petal, well, with respect to yes, in the petal it's going to be complete. So if you consider the pedal and the fatu coordinates it, with its image, it's going to be conjugate because the fatu coordinate is injective and then it's subjective to the uh, 
um, to the image. Uh, yes, I'm just trying to think about, am I saying something wrong? So if I'm in this uh, degree two case, then I'm pretty sure of it. If you are not using this, then since you, you take roots to get back, but I think it should be still be fine. Yes, the problem is that it's not, it's only semi-conjugate when you get it to the whole basin. I see. So I, I started with something which was local, local, Locally, everything is fine, but then when you globalize it, life can get a little more difficult. I think there is uh, what's more interesting is when you you wanted to classify modulo holomorphic uh, conjugacies when you consider the two petals at the same time. This is more interesting, I think, it's something. Yes. More, yeah. Yeah. Actually, this goes, so when you go, want to classify, for example, this kind of maps with respect to holomorphic uh, analytic conjugacy, then you have a bunch of invariants. So let me do it in here. So all these invariants are going to, well, you're considering what are called or maps. And this goes back to a Calvaronian uh, invariant. And you consider that, and this give, it, give you together with, well, of course, the first derivative, which was one, and this k over here, uh, a bunch of holomorphic invariants. I see. But, and actually, so what we're going to do, well, what Lavers does is essentially the other way around. So instead of considering the or map, it's considering the other map, which is the inverse of the or map, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. I think that then we'll thank Professor Racy again. Yeah.